Hello, and welcome to Let's Talk Charlotte. On this episode, we're going to sit down with Charlotte County Commissioner Christopher Constance to learn about the Gulf Consortium, tourism, and much more. Good afternoon, Commissioner Constance. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, my, my pleasure. So let's first start talking about the Gulf Consortium. And you're the representative in that. What, what is the Gulf Consortium? And can tell our viewers why that's so important to Charlotte County? Well, if everyone remembers, back in April of 2010, we had the uh, oil spill in the Gulf, uh, Deepwater Horizon. Uh, because of that, um, uh, uh, there was a settlement uh, with all of the counties that rim the Gulf mm -hmm. and uh, Florida has 23. The there were eight disproportionately affected ones that were up in the Panhandle, and the other 15 come down to this area down here. Um, in 2010, pretty much right after that, the the counties got together and decided they needed to coalesce and advocate for uh, you know rep reparations for what occurred. Mm -hmm. So the Gulf Consortium was formed, um, and I was fortunate enough to get involved at the beginning. We had a prior commissioner, uh, Skidmore, who was, who was representing, and then when he left, I took over. Um, and since that time, I've been very involved, uh, been a member of the executive committee for many years, and for the last two years, I've been the chairman of the Gulf Consortium. Um, I helped fight uh, for an equal share. Um, there was, um, I'm trying to remember, and I think about $280 million of pot three that came down mm -hmm. and roughed out. It's about $2.4 million for each of the counties, and we split it equally, which is great. Um, and, you know, what's wonderful is we get to use it for water quality projects. That was a no-brainer for us. We, mm -hmm. we had some opportunity with some of the other money to do some oyster restoration, which is great for water quality. But we in Charlotte County realized that we have got to do more to improve the water quality related to the coastal areas. And we have a lot of septic systems that have been proven to move nitrogen out into the water. So mm -hmm. the bacteria may not get out, but the nitrogen does. And when you put a lot of nitrogen in the waterways, you wind up with algal blooms and problems with algae. And so we really want to have clean, beautiful water um, you know, I was elected in 2010, and, and shortly thereafter, when we had our um, um, planning sessions with the commission, uh, we used to go out to the beach complex. And I said, you know, this is so beautiful out here. We really need to have a blue water strategy. Mm -hmm. And um, I never push my ideas. I just want people to consider what, you know, what is it that, we're, what are our goals? And it was really accepted. I think, you know, they really understood, wow, you're right. We, we, we have this jewel, we, and we've got to protect it. We've got to leverage it because they just don't make any more of this type of coastal community anymore. And if you want to go someplace where the buildings are all built up, there's lots of those communities. But we want to keep this uh, beautiful and clean. So, you know, we've taken most of that money and programmed it for our 15-year uh, septic to sewer plan. Okay. Um, we, we worked with a consultant to map out which were the oldest areas of septic tanks which were the um, um, uh, ones that were starting to have issues um, and the ones that are closest to the water. So everything was, was given a numeric uh, value and we decided, hey, this is the five year, this is the 10 year section, this is the 15 year section. And we've been moving along at a very good pace. I'm very proud of my fellow commissioners for the fact that they, they understand it. We work so well together to um, you know, move the needle and really try to get a lot of stuff done. El Jobin is, uh, f I think, almost fully constructed now. They're starting to do the hookups. Um, we are working on the Ackerman section. So we're, we're really trying to get uh, a lot of that stuff done and um, improve those waterways. And this is something that's been going on, the septic issue, for 20 plus years that the County Commission has been working towards improving these systems. Yeah, the scary thing is 20, probably 25, because I think it was uh, early, early to mid 90s that mm plans were drawn up and they spent millions of dollars and then it kind of fizzled because it's a, it's a very expensive mm -hmm. thing. 
The other wonderful uh, aspect of this is that the governor has decided that septic to sewer makes a lot of sense, that mm -hmm. DEP is really on board with this concept, and we are shovel ready. We are, we are so far ahead in the planning curve, uh, so I really feel we're going we're gonna to start to rate very highly for additional grant funding and things, and we, our political advocacy, I think, has improved dramatically over the last 10 years um, with the staff personnel that we have. Um, uh, Emily Lewis and then um, uh, Cameron Pennant, who's mm -hmm. exceptional, and we've really worked well. We have multiple commissioners that go up to Tallahassee very, very often to advocate uh, for our issues. Um, a, a little off topic, though, but beach renourishment. I think we got 12.65 million dollars to renourish the Englewood Beach area, which was sorely needed. But that took a lot of advocacy and and getting up there and making people understand how important our issues are in Charlotte mm -hmm. County don't think we've had that in the past and we, we've started to really do that at the state and federal level. And that's made us ready for these types of grants from the Gulf Consortium to be able to get these projects shovel ready. Right, well the money from the consortium is guaranteed. I'm talking about additional money. Mm. You know, we, we know we're going to be programming I think it's something like five million dollar tranches for different phases over the 15 year period as BP pays off into the consortium fund. But there's additional money that's going to be coming from Tallahassee outside of that. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, again, we're fortunate in that we, we sort of read the writing on the wall and we know this is coming, so we want to be prepared for it. And when we're the only ones or one of very few that are ready to take the money, mm -hmm. they spend it that year. So we'll be ready for it. That's terrific. And one of the things that we want to talk about is also the tourism industry and what protecting our waters and having our pristine harbor is one of the things that makes us such a tourist hotspot. Um, you are a representative on the Tourist uh, Industry Board. Uh, let, can we talk about what role the county um, is in in supporting the tourism industry? Sure. Um, I, I've really enjoyed my time. Uh, I, I think I did like four or five years and I chaired for a while in the past and now I've had this opportunity again this year. It's been a pleasure working with Sean Doherty who's the d Director for Tourism and the whole uh, TDC, which is made up of members of the community that are um, basically elected onto the board by the, the county commission. Um, you know, we really need to work in concert because there are challenges. Um, water quality and, and keeping that water quality uh, where it is, um, managing funds that we have to support marketing of events, but we've been very, very successful when you look at things like the resurrection of the air show and Waterfest and um, so many of the, of the um, events that occur in the city of Punta Gorda, um, we've been very fortunate. The challenges are things like red tide mm -hmm. and, and really deal more with the environment than anything else. I think we've overcome most of the other things that we've dealt with. We've been very fortunate that we have a, a third property uh, that was built I think two years ago or three years ago in Punta Gorda, the Spring Hill Suites. So now you have uh, the Four Points, Spring Hill, and the Wyvern. So those are three really, you know, high mark hotels. We have the waterfront as well. You know, we have others, but that's allowed for larger events to occur at the event center. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of great uh, annual um, amateur uh, boxing events um, at the at the event center, and I think there's been a very good collaboration. Um, Sunseekers finally happening, and mm -hmm. you know, once again after 18 months uh, of being kind of silent, so. We're looking forward to the end of 22, beginning of 23, when that property will open up. But again, none of these things are going to be successful if we don't have good water quality. Mm -hmm. And so when um, there's these big releases from Piney Point that, that had to get done so that the, the infrastructure wouldn't fail, um, and then weeks to months later, all of a sudden there's big red tide blooms mm -hmm. on, our, on our shores, you know, for me, one plus one equals two. I mean, I, I you know, I have yet to have anybody explain uh, how those things are unrelated. And then we're dealing with Lake Okeechobee and the releases that occur both on the east and west coast. And now there may be more releases or only releases to the west, which mm -hmm. is not going to be tenable. So we're working hard to support Lee County in their efforts and uh, just try to make it a fair process because at the end of the day, Water quality is number one. We're very fortunate. Um, we've had a, a, a great history of our, our drinking water with the Peace River Water Authority. I was, I was involved in that for many years and, and um, I got to work with the authority. I mean, they, they try to be really responsible about taking water at the right time when it's really clean. There's no salinity issues, no turbidity. 
Um, processing it, we have that one square mile of water, so that's great, we've got a good reserve, and we're looking at possibly adding to that with another reservoir because this whole region is growing so much and we're working with Manatee, Sarasota, and uh, DeSoto County, mm -hmm. so that authority is, is critical to the water infrastructure. Um, you know, I'm excited that we're expanding our own RO plant down in Burn Store, um, and we've got a lot of other things going on, and, and, and with those expansions come the expansion to wastewater. Because again, we've got to, with all these hookups, we've got to be able to process that water and make sure that whatever we, we um, the resulting effluent is either, you know, uh, clean enough to be pumped or uh, at some point maybe even placed back up toward the, the authority. But, you know, again, it's been a very responsible um, exercise in, in trying to maintain a, a, that critical infrastructure because without energy and without water, you, you don't have a community. You mm -hmm. just can't have uh, any, any livability. And we have such a beautiful area here that, you know, I think tourism is an easy sell. You know, if, I, if we can talk a little bit about COVID, you know, we got back on track really fast because our ad campaign had everything to do with you know, uh, a, a lady with a kayak sitting on a, standing on a dock all alone mm -hmm. in this beautiful green area. And everybody was in these big cities trying to figure out how do we get out, where do we go, how do we get away from all this population mm -hmm. density. And we were very successful. Um, we had some great presentations by our marketers telling us that we leveraged our marketing dollars 25 to 1, which is just, you know, unheard of. So mm -hmm. again, I, I kudos to to uh, Director Doherty and also to the to the whole TDC uh, group because they they understand it, you know the 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 West County um, Barrier Island folks, uh, the City of Punta Gorda folks, you know they've all started to really work together over the last five years, six years. When I was involved, you know it got better and better, and it's a team approach now. Um, it's exciting. It really mm -hmm. is. And, and with with the tourism coming and there's growth also happening in Charlotte County. And with that, we, we're going to talk about the, the Metro Metropolitan Planning Organization. Mm -hmm. And you've been a strong advocate for the, the MPO over the years. Um, one of the, the uh, projects that you're interested in is the inter interchange off of uh, 75 at Kings Highway and Toledo Blade ex exit. Can we talk a little bit about how that's going to help our community and, and, and the infrastructure in our community? Sure. Uh, you know, uh, good news, bad news. I mean, I, I, I've been very privileged to serve on the MPO since I was elected in, in 2010. Um, and I really enjoy it. I really enjoy working with the Florida Department of Transportation folks because they're very smart individuals. Um, there's a lot of rules that, that you've got to, you know, incorporate into how things get planned out. Um, but the commissioners, the uh, representation from the airport and the city, it's a great group um, to, that, that really tackles the hard issues. And we've had a real problem at the intersection of Veterans and Kings Highway. It's just, it's just a bottleneck of cars and it, there's no way to make it much better. So it just occurred to me one day, we really need another interchange at 75. That, that highway broke up a bunch of roads that traditionally were there and it kind of cut all that cross traffic off. Mm -hmm. And there's only one way to get across 75 and that's Kings Highway. We, we have to have a better exchange in those areas. So I realized, well, it's either gonna be veterans if it's, if it's in our county, right there at the county line, or what made more sense, but we'd have to get buy-in from Sarasota and City of Northport was either Raintree or Yorkshire because, and one of them is really set up for it. So um, I pitched it to our MPO. They thought it was a great idea. I pitched it almost immediately at a joint meeting. It just happened to happen a few months later or a couple months later. And they were very accepting. And it has to, they had to because otherwise it doesn't get done. And, and basically it was very simple. You know, guys, we think it's smarter for it to be there in your county, in your city, but if you don't want it, let us know because we're going ahead with it. Um, and the good news is we had a presentation, I think uh, from somebody in the Sarasota Manatee uh, MPO uh, that they had an exchange that they wanted to add and it's finally getting done. Um, 15 years later, and, and, and you think that's really slow, that's like super fast. So as much as we're excited about this moving forward, it's going to be another 10 or 15 mm -hmm. years at least, but uh, the good news is there, there is a lot of development planned around that area, and I think that, that will push this mm -hmm. uh, to move forward. So um, I'm excited, and again, very appreciative that, you know, you just, you, you th 
you bring up ideas and and I look for criticism. I look for people to kind of either shoot it down or add to it or but it's all about having that discussion and finding out is this even feasible. Mm. And uh, we were very lucky because they the application used to be ridiculous and then it just so happened that they the pre-app was a lot shorter and so we could get this in and it was starting to sh to look like yeah you know this this could be something that will work. So mm -hmm. kind of excited about that that uh, that opportunity. Now what are some of the other projects that the MPO is working on? Well, you know, it's it's interesting um, we 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 really have to solve um, Harborview and you know, if you've ever been on 75 or 41 and there's been an accident on one of those bridges, there's a four-lane road between I-75 and 41 on the south side of the Peace River in Punta Gorda. But if you go north and you've got to get across on the north side, Harborview is only a two-lane road. It's got very tight corners. It's very unsafe. And so um, I guess about seven, eight years ago, I started, you know, talking about, hey, what are we ever going to do about that? And shouldn't the state get involved because you've got a U.S. highway and, a, and an interstate? So FDOT, again, has really stepped up and they understand it. And um, this may tie in with the, the infrastructure plans in Washington because, you know, we, we really need to get this uh, done. And we've talked with FDOT about the fact that, um, you know, let's get this shovel ready. So when the uh, ec economic downturn occurred because of COVID, we were supposed to have the whole road programmed on Harborview. And they came back and said, listen, you know, we can only afford half. And, you know, I, I don't want to build half a road in four years. And then, so I, I really have been pushing. So that we've got to get this done in one shot. Uh, at least let's buy all the right of way. Let's get the plans done, get all the right of way, get ready, start building the road. And maybe through some miracle, because it's shovel ready, we'll get some money from Washington or possibly more money will get freed up from Florida Department of Transportation because if in a budget year the money they're supposed to expend doesn't get expended they look for projects. Mm -hmm. We've been very fortunate when Burnstore Road was getting all built w there was extra money that continued to come in and they'd knock on our door and say hey can you use another million and a half because this project in Polk County didn't get going so it's got to get spent. Great. So, you know, we're, we're looking to leverage that relationship. The good news is they know Charlotte County gets it done on time mm -hmm. and under budget. You know, we're, we're consistently doing that. And we've had great uh, improvements when we, we finished out um, Piper Road. I mean, these are not FDOT projects, but, you know, Piper Road got finished between uh, 17 and Jones Loop, and it's been a huge uh, boon to the economy because of the distribution centers that are going to go in on that mm -hmm. pipeline. We're working hard to finish off or get most of Edgewater done. Uh, applaud, I really want to applaud the citizens for passing the sales tax because so many things get done that we just couldn't afford to do. We have very little money that we actually program as commissioners. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're done with your tax bill, you're done paying for the school board and the sheriff and the constitutionals, you know, we only control about 14% of that dollar uh, other than, you know, MSBUs paying for roads and lighting mm -hmm. and things that you're getting direct benefit. So having that additional capital to work on roads and facilities and you know improvements to the courthouse things like that all very important to livability here in Charlotte mm -hmm. County but I, again the citizens get it and I think it's because we've had a great track record over the last 20 years we've taken that money we've done with it what we were supposed to and again brought it in basically on time on budget or you know under budget because we work so hard to squeeze all the value out of those dollars mm -hmm. that we can and I mean, right now we're going through tremendous growth. There's hundreds of, of houses being built every month, and we're going to need this infrastructure to support the new citizens that are coming to Charlotte County. Absolutely. Um, let's talk a little bit about development and the development of blue-green spaces and how Charlotte County is working to, to make that happen. Well, I, I think that concept is kind of in its infancy. I mean, we right now, you know, the blue water strategy is off and running. Um, the green space strategy, you know, m preserving green space, and I think this is a critical time to have this discussion, I is, is getting some traction. I, I do think my fellow commissioners agree. I think it comes down to the planners helping us try to figure out how do we plan. Is it, do we, do we look back at our comp plan? Do we make some revisions? You know, there are some places that are going to be grandfathered for development because they're owned. Um, but there may be other opportunities for us to do a better job of planning. And it's not just parks. You know, we, we have to have 
um, more spaces. Maybe it's you know mitigation banks that are that are intertwined to where we live. Because um, right now it's it's really decent, but as we continue the infill, mm. it's going to get tougher. Uh, you know, one thing that everybody complains about with regard to general development pre-platting this entire mm -hmm. county sort of near the water. I mean, when you look at a map, all the population is kind of in the western third of Charlotte County, right? The other two thirds is all, you know, pretty much ranches mm -hmm. and cattle and groves and stuff. But they pre-platted it all. So you're not going to be able to have a developer come in and put up a thousand homes like they're doing in Murdoch now because they got it all, all that land in one big chunk. So for me, it's kind of a silver lining because that means development is going to be slow. It's going to be measured. And we're not going to have, you know, just a blast of homes and a blast of traffic. So I think the trick is to try to limit density as much as we possibly can and try to preserve the livability. And I hope the taxpayers understand that, you know, if you do that, you're, you're going to have to, you know, everything's getting more expensive. We, in order for us to hang on to employees, we have to give pay raises. They deserve it. They do a great job here at the county. Um, you know, that, that's one of the things that I, I can really hang all of our hats on is the fact that, that people take tremendous pride in what they deliver here in Charlotte County in all of the departments. Um, you know, if I didn't have such a great relationship and enjoyed working with these commissioners, if I didn't have such a great relationship with Mr. Flores and the other um, administrators and, and department heads, you know, I, I don't know if I'd want to come to work here. But, but this is such a, a great community of people that serve the county. Um, it, it makes it very easy and they're very, very dedicated. So there's a cost to that, you know, and that, you know, we want to keep the good people. The, the private sector is, is hurting right now. They really need a lot of folks and there's, there's help wanted signs everywhere. So now more than ever, we've got to work to preserve that and, and there's a cost to delivering high quality mm -hmm. service. And, you know, when you call, somebody picks up the phone and there's an issue and they take care of it. We can, we can reduce costs by having less people and, you know, dialing back services, but folks are going to have to realize there's, it's not going to be as comfortable to live here. So striking that balance between <laughs> um, the tax bills and the, our quality of life, let's talk about that. You know, again, what, when we're talking about um, the level of service that you get in the community here, it's, it's really exceptional. And I, and I think people that work for the county do it um, not just for the paycheck. They, they love their community and they know that they can really affect positive changes, um, just, just a, a you know, positive attitude and really make it a very livable, wonderful place because that's where they live, work, and play. And mm -hmm. so they want to make it a great place for their families and for the citizens. And I, and I think a lot of the folks that work for the county, they, it's, it's really is kind of a labor of love. They, mm -hmm. they are in areas that they enjoy, you know, look at community services and parks and rec and those types of, you know, pursuits. Um, the libraries, you know, they really do a wonderful job. And, and you go into these places, they love it. You know, I've stopped folks uh, in utilities working on a, on a, on a pipe repair and, uh, you know, they are, they're loving their job. I mean, I, I feel really good about the quality and they're, they're getting in there and getting it done. Um, you know, I, I just, I look for uh, folks in the community that are working, the firefighters, the sheriff, you know, the deputies, and, you know, they are all, um, they, they, they have ownership in mm -hmm. this community and they really care. So, you know, we're very fortunate. I think that's, that's what allows Charlotte County to kind of sell itself, is people who come down to visit, mm -hmm. they say, wow, this place is a really a beautiful location and these people are really nice and boy, there's a lot of stuff to do and a lot of services and a lot of things, you know, a lot of things going on in the background that you don't really think of, but it's there. Um, so I, I really think that we're fortunate. We really are. Very good. Well, thank you, Commissioner Constance, for taking your time out of your day and doing this Let's Talk Charlotte with us. Oh, my absolute pleasure. Thank you, thank you. so much for having me.